Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, and this is how to make an RPG in Unity, and welcome to episode 24. So this time we're going to carry on and we're going to have a look at kind of working through our quests that we get from our little NPC that we can just see here. And we're going to work on the AI with our spider boss. So what I'm going to do to start off with is because eventually we're going to use the same kind of methods we've used for our spider here, I'm going to encompass our entire spider within its own cube. Now this is going to be handy for us because the cube kind of gives us a bit more freedom with the spider itself. So what I'll do is I will right click 3D object cube on the spider itself, bring the cube up, let's scale it to about five by maybe three by five. So it covers pretty much all of our spider. And as I always say, you can take as much time as you need when working with this kind of thing. So let's bring it to about there. Now let's turn the mesh renderer off, uncouple the cube from the spider, and then recouple the spider itself to that cube. Now, because we've done that, what we're going to have to do is turn off the nav mesh agent and the spider boss AI on the actual spider and reattach them to the cube itself. So on the cube, a component, nav mesh agent, and in our scripts folder, in AI scripts, we have that spider boss script. So just attach that to the cube. And then remember, the destination is going to be the player. So let's right click and rename and have this as boss spider. So now this cube will react in the same way that the spider did previously. So moving on. What we're going to do now is we're going to add some scripting to the spider, similar to the spider AI, but a little uh, less code in there because we don't need all the code that originally had. But the idea is the spider will come and attack us. So in the AI scripts, let's right click, create C sharp script. Let's have this as spider boss attack. And let's open it up in Visual Studio. And we're not going to need to use the namespace in this, so we don't need any declarations up there. We do, however, need a couple of variables. So let's get rid of the annotations up there and let's start with the enemy itself, which is going to be the spider. So public game object the enemy semicolon. Next one, we're going to have the attack trigger again. So public int attack trigger semicolon and finally the dealing damage uh, variable so public int dealing damage semicolon so we could theoretically use that as a bool if we uh, wanted to i guess it's kind of up to you what you want to do because you may have different uh, modes as it were uh, for now i'm going to use uh, dealing damage as an integer but we may change it if we feel necessary. So let's get rid of void start and the annotation there because we do not need that. So let's start with in void update, if, and in brackets, attack trigger equals, double equals, zero, open curly bracket. And what we need to do is play the walking animation for the spider. So by default, it plays it anyway, but if we've just done something else, played a different animation, we're going to want to carry on with the walking animation. So the enemy dot get component and in brackets animation, spiky brackets, remember, dot play and in brackets and quotes walk. And I do believe it is with a capital W. We'll just check that. So if we go to Unity, click on Spider. Yes, it's a capital W for walk. So actually, while we're here, uh, we'll click on the walk animation and we'll extract the attack animation. So let's take that one. Hold control, press D to extract it out of the prefab. And let's have wrap mode set as once. Now let's attach that to the spider itself. So its size is going to be two. And let's drag and drop attack as element one. So back to our script. And 
basically what we're saying here, if the attack trigger is zero, just play the walking animation. We'll run another if statement to say if the attack trigger is equal to, let's say, one, then do the following. And we'll nest this rather than do an and just in case because we may decide to add in a little extra something if only the attack trigger is one and the dealing damage is or a difference with a different number. So I, don't, I want to nest it rather than combine it. So if dealing damage equals zero. So basically what that means is if the spider isn't dealing damage, then we play its attack animation. So the enemy dot get component spiky brackets animation open close bracket dot play and in brackets and quotes it is attack with a capital A of course and then what we're going to do is we're actually going to run the same coroutine as we have done for our spider and I think we can call it the same sort of thing so we're just going to go start co routine and in brackets taking damage if I spell it right open close bracket close bracket semicolon and there so after the void update what we can do is if we go back to unity to our scripts folder down here AI scripts and we can use spider AI so if we go into spider AI and we should be able to copy this I enumerator taking damage right here. So copy those lines of code, that entire method, back into spider boss attack. <clears throat> and just below the void update method, we can paste that. And let's save that script for now. What we do also need to do is use the same lines of code we've used previously, which is the on trigger enter and on trigger exit, and we can quickly type those out. So void on trigger enter, uh, doesn't need to be private, so we can get rid of that and we don't need anything in the parentheses, <clears throat> excuse me. And we just put attack trigger equals one, semicolon. Same applies for on trigger exit. So void on trigger exit, and again, it does not need to be private. We do not need anything in the parentheses. And we do the inverse of this. So attack trigger equals zero, semicolon, and save. So now let's attach our spider boss attack to our boss spider up here. And it's this one, so drag and drop onto there. And let's set those, uh, it was just one variable, that's fine. So. The enemy is going to be the spider, not the cube which surrounds it. So make sure we put spider in there. And let's save our scene and let's quickly try this out. So the idea of what should happen is if we come all the way over here towards our spider enemy, he should attack us when we get close straight away. So we can see there that our timing is a little bit off. So we're gonna to need to wait for probably 1.1 seconds and then it'll take that off. Uh, second one could probably stay about uh, 0.4. So let's resave and let's play again. And this is something that we can work with. So obviously feel free to test this as much as you actually need to. There's no, you know, I'm not gonna teach you how to test things. Okay, so there you go. He attacked us, and he, we're also taking damage here, so that's that pretty much sorted. There's little things you'll probably have to work out, which I'm not going to do here because it's just completely wasting time. Your whole methods, your whole collider sizes and everything. For example, if we go on the boss spider and stretch the um, collider right here, the box collider, let's say to 2 on the X and 2 on the Z, Obviously, that gives the spider a lot more space around it, which means you can't quite get close enough, but it also gives the spider a bit more of an opportunity to attack further away, like so. So, uh, it's up to you how you want to have your 
uh, colliders, you know, is something for you to work on. So, next thing we're going to do is let's quickly animate the gate over here because we've set this whole thing up and we have the ability for our spider to attack us and you know we can't actually get to him yet because this gate doesn't actually work so if we go to the gate and let's spend just a couple of minutes animating these in a real real simple way so what we'll do in the same sort of fashion as we did with the uh, treasure chest we can have a pivoting point or a hinge or whatever you want to call it. So on the gate itself, right click, 3D object, cube. And I'm going to make this cube uh, quite thin. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And I'm going to position it where we would want the gate to pivot. So about there, maybe about there. Um, that's not quite center. That looks about right. And I'm going to detach this cube from there. Right click, rename, and let's have it right gate village. And I'm going to attach that to there and turn off the mesh renderer for it. And the same applies to our left gate. And what I'll do to make things a little bit easier is take this cube itself even though it's got the gate in it, hold control, press D. And I'm going to bring it over this way to kind of even things out. Uh, in the meantime, I will delete that gate out of there. And maybe I should turn the mesh render on so we can see where it is. So we'll have it about there. Right click, rename. Oops. Uh, right click, rename, sorry. And we'll just call it left gate village and then we attach the left gate to it and let's move it up here in the hierarchy next to our right gate and let's turn off the mesh renderer now if we rotate we should be able to see that we can swing these gates open no problem so let's set that animation real easy uh, we'll start with the left gate let's go to our animations folder and into village zero one and Oops, click on the right one and click on animation, create. And let's have this left gate anim. And we've done animations before. We know to click the record button. We know we're doing the 60 frames a second. So I'm going to say first frame, the rotation is currently set at 90. So we want it to be 90. And I want these gates to open over the course of, let's say, one and a half seconds. So 90th frame. We want the rotation to be not that much, to be about there maybe. So let's say five and press the record button to stop that. Let's go to our animations, left gate, and we don't want loop time. In fact, we may as well set it to legacy. So uh, debug, legacy, normal, and once. And same will apply to our right gate. So, uh, right gate, animation, create, and right gate, anim, save, press record. Uh, first keyframe, zero. Again, we want this to be 90. And by the 90th frame, we want it to be open to... Uh, 175 maybe that looks okay and hit the record button and let's do the same again for that right gate let's go to debug legacy normal and once and then on both the objects remove the animator and add in animation reason being because we want to be able to control this animation so uh, left gate animation straight onto there untick play automatically same again with right gate, remove component, add animation, untick play automatically, and right gate animation onto there, and let's save our scene. So, as it stands now, what's happening is it's quite basically the gates won't actually open, and next episode we will create a, uh, a new object which will allow us to, when we open the gate, um, we firstly activate 
our spider over here because if we don't, if we leave him activated now, he will eventually come for us within the village and we don't want that. So next episode, we're going to create a little area here which will allow us to open the gate. It'll allow us to set the spider boss active to come and get us and we'll also add in the ability to kill our spider because he's a big boss thing. He's part of the quest and we are going to get this quest finished very soon and then move on to something more relevant to the game. So guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.